Okay, I got the Minneapolis Marine Crawler out today. Just nice fall day. Just kind of driving it around one last time, stretching its legs before it goes back in the shed for the winter. Um, I'll do a short little video about it. This is actually a prototype machine. This was a one of one build. There's not another one around like it. Uh, it was put together in 1956 and the serial number is X253. It's kind of a unique thing. It's uh, basically a 445 tractor that had the rear end housing taken off and they custom built a, no a different rear end housing with final drives and mounted the whole thing on a Caterpillar D2 undercarriage. There is actually a lot of Caterpillar parts in this thing. Like I said, the entire undercarriage, uh, the steering clutches are D2, the brakes are D2. Um, kind of a neat piece. And uh, This is a picture of this machine taken back in 1956. This was in the prototype shop at the Minneapolis Marine Factory. Um, this was just kind of, some of these people were company guys, some of these people were outside investors. Uh, the word I got from the archives is that this was a meeting that they had down at the shop that they were looking at starting up a crawler line and they were needing some money basically to start up and do the research and development and they were giving these guys a sales pitch. You know, it's kind of neat to see this tractor back in the day, you know, compared to now. I'll just do a quick walk around with it. Now one way to spot prototype parts on a Minneapolis Million is by looking at the part number. Now this part number is production right here. It's got a 10A prefix. Most all Minneapolis Million castings that were production have a 10A prefix on them. But you go back here, like I say, this whole rear end housing is pretty much all custom. It's got the factory three point on it. As you go down here, you look at the final drive housing. I'll have to tip this upside down so you can see it. You can see the 10X prefix on that part number. That indicates that this piece pretty much was a one-of-a-kind limited production, basically prototype piece. It was never in production in this form. That's how you identify prototype parts on Minneapolis Molines. Um, and like I said, it's got a Caterpillar D2 undercarriage on, which is kind of neat. Like the drive sprockets, the track frames, idlers, track rollers, tracks, all that stuff is Caterpillar D2. Kind of another neat part of this machine. Down here you see where the mainspring goes underneath the bell housing, holds the whole cat up. That's actually a spring out of a Caterpillar 4U model D2. That's the narrow gauge D2. This is set on the same gauge as a 4U series narrow D2. And that spring in a D2 would actually arch down. In this machine it's been disassembled and restacked in reverse so it arches up. It's just kind of kind of another neat thing. You know, they, they adapted some of the clutch and brake parts from, you know, production D2 pieces and this spring was another one of them. Well, it's got the standard 445 cross on the front, Moline emblem. All the sheet metal's the same. It's even got the 445 tag on it. The transmission is the shorter style 445 tractor production transmission that would have been found like in a utility or industrial model. Um, it's got the Minneapolis Moline Amplitor high low range unit in it. And here's the throttle. Um, steering clutch levers just kind of prototyped in. Come around here. Like I said earlier, it's got the production 445 three point lift assembly on it. Um, it's got a belt pulley. PTO, pretty much set up as an agricultural based machine. Draw bar down there. And here's the main clutch. It's basically, it's the same clutch as you'd find in a production 445 tractor. They just took the foot pedal off and they made this handle so it springs back to the engaged position. To disengage it, you have to hold it back, you let it go, it springs back engaged. Not my favorite type of clutch unit for a crawler, but you know, it's prototype. It was never meant to enter production, they just put it together quick just to kind of show everybody about what size of machine they'd be planning on making. Um, come back here, and you can see this really ugly weld that's back here on the rear end housing. I've had more comments about this weld, you know, negative comments. You know, people don't like how it looks. They said the rest of the machine was finished rather nice. Why'd you leave it like that? Well, I didn't do that weld. It's actually part of the story of this machine. 
Now, this machine came from some farmers local to this area who had a relative that worked in the Minneapolis Marine Research and Development Project back in, back in the 50s. And when they'd get done with a lot of their prototype units, some of the department heads had the option of buying them pretty much for scrap price. Sometimes they'd hold drawings, you know, for a certain machine. They'd put all their names in a hat, and then whoever got their name drawn got to take it home, whatever. Well, that's how they got this crawler. Now, the story I got from the family that it came from was when they went down to pick it up at the Moline factory, they had the trailer down there. They were setting out the ramps, ready to drive it up on the back of the trailer, and there was a crane operator in the yard that said, hey, I'll just sling this thing up for you. I'll lift it up, set it right on your trailer, save you some time. So they said, sure. Well, he got this thing lifted up just about trailer height, and this corner broke free somehow and dropped. And this is the corner that hit first, and it broke this whole casting. Now this whole rear end casting is another 10X piece. It's a one of a kind. You know, you're not going to find another one like it. Well, at the time, they were given the option of the company buying this machine back from them and basically melting it down. Well, they said, they said, no, we'll take it back home. We'll try and fix it ourselves. So this was a back home on the farm fix. Uh, it's just kind of a scar that shows how close this thing came to the melting pot. So I figured, you know, I could clean it up a little bit, but it's part of the story. I decided to leave it. They welded it on the inside as well as the outside. Like I say, it's not the most pretty, not the prettiest welds you've ever seen, but it's part of the history. So that got left. And to operate, it's pretty much like any crawler. Some of the controls here. You got the ignition, of course. That's the choke. You have the main clutch. Now this lever controls the steering clutch for the left track. This lever controls the steering clutch for the right track. This is the brake pedal for the right track. Brake pedal for the left track to aid in steering. Uh, Three-point controls. Pretty much production standard like you'd find in a 445. Now I'll climb up on this thing and we'll take it for a little bit of a drive. Lots of leaves coming down today. Now there's not a whole lot of room on this thing. You know, and these are bent pretty good. There's not a whole lot of room for your feet. But like I said, it's just it's just prototype. So make sure it's in neutral. Turn the ignition on. Pull on the starter lever. 